morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jacob Sills. I'm with UpTrust. We're a public benefit <coughs> corporation that's based in San Francisco. Um, so for today, the problem we're going to talk about is a problem that actually affects all of us, and it's uh, the problem of that too many people are in jails. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I'm not in jail. Maybe I don't even know anyone who's been to jail. It's probably unlikely. Uh, but it's really affecting us because it's costing way too much money, and it's really ruining a lot of our communities. So um, I started looking at this problem about a year ago, and what we found was that there was actually a few pain points that we could sort of target that would actually lead to like a huge um, lowering of the jail population. And that was that too many people are missing their first court date. Um, what happens in the system is when you miss a court date, um, a bench warrant will be issued, then you have to go to jail. If you ever get arrested again, the judge looks at you, sees you have a bench warrant in the past, and they're gonna set high bail. If you have a lot of money, that's not your problem because you just meet the bail. But if you can't, you end up in jail. And so what's happened thus far is if you look at our jails, about 75% of them are people who haven't even had their trial yet. Um, they're generally nonviolent. They're not even to have led to have committed a violent felony, but they're stuck in jail. It's costing us almost $10 billion a year. So then the next question was, well, where are they going if they're not showing up to court? Next slide. And what we found was, you know, it's not like law and order. People aren't fleeing to Paris or Mexico. Most of the people are actually at home. And the issues are, you know, not like they are in the movies. People aren't, you know, you know trying to avoid the law and make it to the border. Um, what's really happening is it's a mixture of organizational problems, like I have a job and I forgot to ask time off work. I need a ride. Or sort of social and emotional issues. You know, you've been mistreated by the police. It's really scary. You don't know what's gonna happen. Um, next slide. And so what we looked at was, well, is there a way to solve this? And what we sort of realized was local governments, generally these are county systems, don't do the best job, even though some people there are well-intentioned, at sort of communicating and putting on sort of an honest human face to the criminal justice system. And likewise, you also have um, defendants who have a mistrust to the system. So we thought there was an opportunity to sort of sit in between and basically take information that the criminal justice system collects and basically act almost as a technology-driven social work system um, to deliver resources and reminders to individuals so that they can make their court dates avoid unnecessary jail. Um, where this is really important long-term is going back to the example before, the judge looks at a guy and says, this guy doesn't respect the system. I don't know if he'll show up. I don't know if he flee uh, was fleeing. Um, if we're successful and we're able to show that we can get um, failure to appear rates, which is the term of art, really low, hopefully judges will release more people or set lower bail. Um, I'll explain a little bit about our exact product. We did a pilot project in Brooklyn um, versus you know, an average of about 20% that miss. We got 1% to miss you know, by providing these services. So next slide. So really the first thing in the text is small is we need to collect information. Um, from doing a bunch of user research, we realize things like what is your daily obligation? Do you need a ride? Have you missed court before? If we can collect what really takes 15 seconds and log that, um, that puts us in a much better position. There's a problem right now where the data that's been collected in these county systems is really stale. It's not centered towards the user, so there's no way to provide better outreach. So what we do with that information, next slide, is we, um, we send a series of text messages. So I know today is like an app uh, demo day. You know, our system is much more back-end integrated with Twilio-based text messages. So if you ever use Uber or Lyft, the text message you get sent, you know, we send all of our reminders and all our connections through that. Um, that way it's really low cost for, the, um, low cost for us to operate. And everyone has a, a phone basically that can get text messages. So the barrier to use is a lot lower. Um, what this shows here is a sample series of text messages. If we know you go to school, we're gonna remind you to you know, let school know that you're not gonna be there so you don't sort of get caught up in the, oh shit, like I've gotta go and I'm missing school in a second, I don't know what to do type of situation. So we help you organize. Um, next slide. Um, also what we do is we provide rides. So we're about to get set up probably in June, we're going through the final um, county council approvals on our contract. Um, but working to provide rides to everyone. We're gonna start with about 500 people in Contra Costa in this next year to provide rides to court. So we'll use text message to say, hey, is this your address? Do you want a free ride to court next week? Um, remind them in that way. Uh, next slide. So basically we can save a lot of money. There's about $10 billion wasted, help communities um, increase economic output and actually create data that can support people. And the last thing I'll say is where we need help from you guys. Uh, next slide. 
is, um, you know, in the Bay Area, we're looking to con uh, connect with more counties. Right now we're talking to Contra Costa and San Francisco. Um, we'd love to talk to nonprofits that are working with individuals that are having these problems because um, we want to sort of leverage the network. And lastly, we want to hire people to give the rides and to provide client advocacy. So we're looking to hire people that were previously incarcerated. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Questions or comments? See one by the window. Hi. Um, how do you reach the people? Is it a, how large a percentage of the population would you say, in terms of their release or parole, don't have phones or pagers? Uh, working with the Lancet Street Project, we found one of the issues in dealing with them in scheduling is that they cannot have phones <coughs> or pagers because that would uh, integral to their past criminal history. Uh, the second thing is, how do you inculcate the trust between you and the potential users? Some of those questions might not seem personal to most people in the room, but to someone who had been in the criminal justice system, those are intensely personal and private questions. So, so the question was, one, how do you, uh, how do you work with folks who don't have phones, especially if part of their parole or part of their criminal history was using phones or pagers? And then uh, how do you, how do you uh, inspire trust with the users because you're asking them for some personal information uh, and that might be awkward? Sure, so on the first thing, we're, we're not working with parole right now. Uh, we're working just in the pretrial side. We think there's definitely applications <laughs> with parole, but we're just focused right now on sort of pretrial attendance, not sort of parole and probation <laughs> compliance. As it relates to trust, I think it's a great question. Um, one of the ways we're trying to deal with that, and once again, we don't definitely have the answer for it at scale, is um, we're working sort of with our partners, which will be public defender's offices, who hopefully are considered sort of advocates, advocates and trusted. So for example, in this instance, um, in Contra Costa, um, assuming everything goes final on the final contract details, um, there will be you know, a public defender and or a public defender paralegal who will ask these questions. The hope is that eventually there's more trust in the system, people talk about it, but no, you're exactly right. Um, we don't want these questions asked by like a police officer or even me, because who am I? Um, so that's a way we're trying to get there, but look, we might find out that doesn't work. You know, that's one of the things that we're trying to sort of test out as we go from like 100 users to 500 next year. Okay, one more question in the back, by the window. I'm curious, um, since most clients don't get assigned to public defender until their first appearance, um, and that's why I see a lot of fall off, I work with assigned to get through. Um, what, can you work with that population and also do you provide any information about process and what to expect? Um, so, so the question is, before they get assigned a public defender, how do you how do you reach them? Sure, and so uh, it depends. So sometimes in different counties, it works sort of different places. It works differently on the different type of thing they're accused of. So for example, um, we're also doing a, a pilot this summer with misdemeanors, and there's a question as to, well, you're getting a citation, how do you sort of get that? So we're working through that. One of the ideas is can people uh, enroll themselves? Um, what was your second question again? Sure, uh, that's sort of TBD up to the public defender. There's certain, our ability is sort of, our system's flexible where we can send whatever we want, but our, our goal is to not overwhelm people with process, but there is the ability to send a text message about where to meet, what to expect, um, and send that so people sort of don't come in there and they're not scared or overwhelmed by the lack of sort of customer service. Great, thank you so much.